Welcome back everyone, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and we're here at the HWBOT World Series final in North America. We are here at the LAN ETS in Canada, that's the biggest LAN party in Canada. And I will be your host for this final of the Extreme Overclockers using liquid nitrogen on the Asus motherboard and T-Sonic PSUs that will try to be to beat their opponents at uh, one of the six benchmarks that will uh, be going out of the um, of the hat. I've been joined for this competition by our experts in overclocking. Dear Ligoft, can you hear me? Yeah, sure, man. Very, very good sound here, even from Chile, Belgium, so no problem. <laughs> Perfect. So you're casting with me live from Belgium. This is a truly international competition. The winner of this match today will win a golden ticket to go to the HWBOT World Championship to be happening in December in Germany. This is a golden ticket. That means only the people at this at the HWBOT World Tour doing the World Series can access this ticket. Uh, we will have a tight fight today. We have the number one one in Canada, number one overclocker in Canada, Mark0053, to be going against Rasparde, that is actually number two in the country in Canada. So that's going to be quite interesting. They're both from the same community. The community uh, is ocnoverclock.net. Actually, big up to the guys at overclock.net because you guys are a media partner uh, here at the World Tour, same as uh, Techmundo, Overclocking TV, and we can all the way, all the fine. Um, some of the thanks, some of the other partners that we have, uh, Comptetra, organizer of the Computex, and of course, um, HWBX, OC Esports, and Streetcom, as well as Microbytes. But most importantly, all the final today will be run on Asus motherboard, partner of this event. Uh, the LN2 is being provided by Praxer. We have 1200 liters of LN2. This will be plenty uh, of use for the overclockers right here. And of course, we have uh, Sisonic that is our platinum, um, uh, providing the PSU, the platinum PSU for the complete world tour. So without them, this event will not be the same. Thank you for being a partner of this event. And we have the information that the um, final should be starting in about five minutes. So League of, what do you expect from this HWBOT World Series final here in Montreal? In fact, I, I have no clue because it's fact both guys from the same team so they if you ever visit OCN.net website you will see that there's like a lot of information and a lot of been shared amongst those members the only thing is I know Resparty from way back already he has been doing the benches on, on a lot of different platforms and, and, and GPUs CPUs whatever and Mark0053 is, is in fact uh, more of a, of a newcomer to me. Maybe he's also been active a long time. We have El Gapo, so one of the, the big guys as well from OCN.net on, on the Twitch. Maybe he can share us some information. But I just looked at, at the submissions from Mark and from Rasparty. And Rasparty has like all over the place. While Mark has been like focused mainly on, on the more modern platforms. But like we said before, totally unprepared setup in fact. They're all using their own motherboards. Mark0053 is using the hero board that you guys provided it to him. But indeed, they don't know the CPU. They've known the CPU from the semifinals, but that's it. And that's not one of the So they got the CPU just this morning. They cannot delete the CPU. They have to use it as it was provided. And uh, oh, they can delete the CPU. Oh, well, you know what? We can queue into the judge. Hi, judge. Can you hear Hi. us? Yeah, they, they, they got the CPU at uh, around 11 because uh, we, we drew again the CPUs between uh, the semifinals. So he's not using the same CPU as before. Oh, so that's even more okay. fair then. Whoa, that's that's perfect. So um, Memory and CPU actually. So the, the set of hardware that were provided were actually super fair. So before each match, they actually did redo, redo uh, which one will get which kit and which CPU. So this is completely new setup, uh, new CPU and memory for them. So that will be quite interesting to see what they can do with liquid nitrogen because, you know, between 25 degrees and negative 200, there's a lot of things that can happen. And that's why these guys uh, are considered the best in their country because I'm pretty sure they will be putting some very extreme uh, result in, in here today. Um, League of, let's talk about the uh, qualification process. So they had to um, to qualify yesterday during three hours. They had three benchmarks to run, all limited at five gigahertz on the CPU and the end core. And um, in the end, we had three three of these uh, uh, overclockers to go into the semi-final. And has, 
you know it's difficult to do a semi-final with three people um, all the uh, the uh, other guys did not did not manage to submit any uh, enough score to be qualified for for uh, for this semi-finals so what was um, what was done to be keeping the competition totally fair is that um, the the we drew a benchmark and the the guys that had the highest score on that benchmark during the qualifier would go straight to the final well that was quite easy because mark actually blew up the complete competition and finished first in all the stages so he was like as like he was completely sure that he could access the uh the, the final directly and for the uh, two other guys rasparade and mr breeze we uh, made them fight in the semi-final you can see that mr breeze is actually going back and forth near the stream system looking at me like yeah yeah that's true i, I did fight as much as i can so sadly he did not uh went above uh rasparade and uh, in the GPU Pi 100M and Draspardy is actually accessing the final. We are all good to go. I got the information from the judge. So let's queue in to dear Christian. Christian, we can yeah. hear you. Okay, so I'm gonna run the benchmark selection. So it's gonna be Cinebench uh, 11.5 mark. Yeah. Okay, you good? Good with it? Okay, so the benchmark is gonna be Cinebench R11.5. Uh, so, Ligoft, what is this uh, this draw for the benchmark? So, indeed, we have a, like a set of six benchmarks, and each competitor has a veto. So, if Don't he doesn't like the benchmark, he can say, "Okay, I veto first? this one." Okay. Maybe you should just let them start, and then we can do the the, the babbling because they really want to go, the guys. Yeah. I am ready. Okay. So, let's start in five, four, three, two, one, go. So again about the benchmarks, so the total set of six different benchmarks. They can Christian draw Cinebench R11.5 as first. Let's assume that Mark said, oh, maybe I'm not sure about this benchmark. I'm not acquainted with it. I veto this one. Then they draw another one. And then, of course, he lost his veto. So it was up to Rasparte to say, okay, I like this one or I don't like this one. And it's, a, it's like a sort of a game. Now, this time in, in Canada, they both ha don't have any idea about the CPUs again. While in France, they could like pre-test it during the entire night. And these guys wanted to make it fair. And they said, okay, we just get the CPUs in the morning and we just put them under the pot, cool them down and see what happens. As simple as that. So this so one is, is a little bit more balanced. And of course, as well, due to the fact that the CPUs are non-deleted, the thermal paste of Intel is still present and they can't go as cold as the guys could in France or even in South Africa. It's it's a different strategy for them to uh, to reach that, and especially Cinebench R11.5 is the first time that this benchmark this benchmark is picked to um, to be used in the HWBot World Series. Uh, don't forget that these guys are fighting for a golden ticket to go to the HWBot World Championship in December in Germany. It is really important for them to you know max out all their systems. And I love to see Cinebench because you can see exactly what's going on in here. You don't have the CPU frequency straight away, but still you can see that the benchmark is running and it's very visual. So right now we have Mark Zero. We would just call it Mark for the for the yeah, competition. Yeah, it make, makes it a little bit, bit more different. The, the fun thing about Cinebench, indeed, it stresses all the cores. Uh, it's, a, it's a perfect 2D benchmark. We see already like an 11.94 score for Mark 0053, but it also scales a little bit with memory. So they don't only have to dial in, let's say, the CPU, they also have to dial in the memory. And there are some tweaks for this benchmark. So it could be that we will see at a certain moment Cinebench, which seems to have crashed, which means that they will put the process on real time. And it also boosts the scores with like, uh, let's say, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 points. There's um, uh, Mark is benching at 4.1 gigahertz, while Raspard is. So we this 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 score is like uh, the thing you can see on the top on the top left 12.14. Yeah, I'm gonna quick cross check what the scores could be. In fact, if they do it. And probably they will max it out around, I think, 5.5, 5.6-ish so again. 1.6 volt on the CPU. You can see that it's definitely higher than what we had for the amateur just before. Is that going to 4.2? The two overclockers are actually benching on their side. So 12.47 for Mark. This is a new score for him. 
this is actually going super fast, super fast. So Mark is yeah. going to 5.2 gigahertz at 1.6 volts. If I just look at, at the bot and we see like people running like 5,300, they should be close to the 13 points benchmark or even go higher. The so looking forward fan. to that one. Oh. Actually, um... Actually, a uh, hiccup in the in the in the screen. Wait. There you have the right screen. So the blue screen is from Raspard, and Mark zero zero three is the red screen. So here we go. You can see this is going super fast, super fast. So let, let's focus on just on, on the score for now. Um, so Mark is about to finish the score. And 13.06, this is uh, improving his score. He's at 1.65, going to 1.7 volts. On the other hand, Raspardi is finishing the benchmark 13.16, still getting back in the lead. This is gonna, this will be super fast. Yeah, it's nice um, to see that the guys are just matching it up and, and just pushing each other to, to, to new limits. Oh, we already have like one crash of the Cinebench, so he needs to put down a little bit more volts probably to get it done. It was a crash for Raspardi. Or maybe. A little bit colder in temperatures, but the thing is, they have to take into account the CPU is not deleted, still the Intel thermal paste there. They can't go too cold. If it cracks, it's game over. They have to heat up again and lose way too much time because we're already like five minutes into the final now. So this benchmark is actually super fast. Each each time you see a square rendering a part of the picture, that's one of the thread of the CPU calculating this part of the picture. This is like 3D rendering, and uh, all the square are actually the work in progress being done. So we have 13.37 points for Mark. And 13.36 points. This is so close. This is so close. We are just five minutes in, and they're just, just pushing a little bit. Boom, benching score. Pushing a little bit. Boom, benching score. So the voltage on uh, Raspard's side is actually at 2 volts right now. So they use the uh, JSKIL DDR4 uh, memory kit. They all use the Asus motherboard. So we, Raspard is using the uh, Maximus 8 Hero from Asus, while um, um, Mark is using the Maximus 8 Extreme. So that's uh, two versions. But these m m these motherboards are based on the Z170 chipset, and they are both using the Intel Core i7-6700K. And both setups are now Intel. running into problems, Truthman. So we saw Raspardi was a bit more lucky. He, his Cinebench just crashed, while Mark0053 had, 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 had other issues. So he's still running, and now Mark needs to figure out how can I get maybe another 100 megahertz or something else? Do I need more cold? Do I need more volts? Do I need, maybe can raise the uncore to boost the score? Maybe do finally the real-time tweak? Because, of course, you have to know that the benchmark is able to run stable at the present clocks. If you just push down the real-time, you don't see anything moving on the screen. And it looks like your setup is like completely locked. Even when pushing the num lock, it, it doesn't budge at all. It, it, it just does. It seems like the system has been freezing. But yeah, you can only watch it by monitoring your thermal probe, so your thermometer, and you can see that the temperature still drops, so it's still working in the background. And finally, it will pop up and give you a score. But at first of all, you need to make sure, can my CPU run these frequencies that I wanted to run at these temps, these volts? Raspberry, actually, Raspberry crashed, so he will have to reboot the system and, and make sure that uh, it will be okay. The, this will give Mark some uh, time to uh, actually improve the 0 0.01 <laughs> seconds he had, a point he had in advance. So as you can see, there's sometimes you can see uh, on Cinebench that is uh, quite fun to see. Some of the of the rendering is actually late, so that means there's one thread that is going slower than the others. Indeed, and that, that's why it's so heavily multi-threaded base that you need it really have to have everything stable and sometimes you can be very unlucky with a cpu where one of the cores can't go as high as all the other ones did not improve his core 13.30 
is actually at 1.72 volts for the voltage at time 56 for the multiplier we'll go run the benchmark again yeah pushing i don't think LED. any of them push the encore as well either at the moment they're just watching multiplier volts and just checking because they're already like nine minutes into the game almost and yeah it's like stressful. Keep in mind, they, they don't know the CPU yet. That's, that will be their, basically, they, they just set up the system and make sure it was okay, but they never experienced cold on this CPU yet, so this is completely new for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's also how you, oh, that's a nice score. 13.63. This is actually improving his score. Yeah, and in fact, that's a pretty efficient score. If I look at the pot and I just pull down the cascade, uh, so let's say minus 100-ish people also benching at 5.5, five, 5.6, five, five, 5.7. So 1363 would put him like in, at the moment in fourth spot if we take into account the cooling. To put that in perspective, the default score of this specific Intel Core i7-6700K CPU is 10.98. So they're actually yep. higher than that. Yeah, much, much higher than that. So this is the HWBot World Series final. The winner of this final will win a ticket to go to the HWBot World Championship in Germany by the end of the year. Now both of the overclockers push too hard their system, too close to the limit, so they crash and they have to restart. Indeed, and, and also this is one of the fun things when, when you do like all these live events. If you can go and they fly you into someone, you can meet all the other guys, all the other guys which you have seen on the forums, maybe on, on the chat, messenger, whatever. But if, to meet these people real in, 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 in life, it's, it's so much more fun. And, and we always talk about the trash talk and, and, and stuff like that. It's a good community. It's not that huge, but it's a fun community, in fact. So we are back. Both of the overclockers are adjusting the voltage. We have Mark setting up 1.7 volts for his Core i7 CPU at 56 multipliers, 100 PCLK. So that's 5.6 gigahertz for Mark. So 1363, 1336. Ross Party has some work to and do. And crashed. So this is close to the edge. This is close to the edge, of course. Let's tune in to uh, to the judge. Hey, dear judge, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, what kind of temperature are they running at? Uh, Mark is running at minus 135 and uh, Tony is running at minus 122. So pretty cold temperatures in my book, in fact, for non-deleted CPUs, but let's just let the guys have a, have a run it, and maybe you can, can see if it, if it works out fine again. Thank you, Christian. We let you back to uh, your judging skills. <laughs> and we are back. Mark is back in the system. 1.73 volts, 1.9 volts for the memory. Just see which CPU Cranking multiplier. He... Now he's working as well with the Uncore. He wants to check if the setup can run the Uncore, because the Uncore in these type of CPUs is linked to the CPU vCore. So with some setups, like with the Haswell, you could set the Uncore independently, and now it's linked. So he needs to find out, can the Uncore run these frequencies? But I really fear he is going too cold. Mark is pushing it a little bit too high on, or too cold on, on, on temps. Might not be a bad idea like Russ Party is doing, like staying at the minus 110, 120 degrees so that the Tim stays in perfect shape, that he can just maybe heat it up with a heat gun and then just rebench again. And there we go, we go the first uh, use of the torch for this HWBot World Series. This is here at the final between Mark and Russ Part. The torch is used for for the for all the people that just join us from the, from the Twitch front page or uh, any of the uh, of the media partner that we have Techmundo or in overclock uh, overclock.net. Uh, if you just join, if you don't know what this is, this is overclocking, extreme overclocking. So the guys are pushing their system to the latest, um, no, to the to the edge as much as they can, and they want to do the best score on a benchmark. And this benchmark today is called Cinebench or 11.5. And if they use the torch, it's because it's too cold. And if it's too cold, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, and it, it'll cause it a feature. You have the cold puck and the cold boot bug. So the cold bug is, could be something that they're experiencing right now that your system just locks at a certain temperature. 
Cold boot bug, of course, is self-explanatory. It's in fact, your setup doesn't boot if it's maybe at minus 120, 130. And then you always need to heat it up via a heat gun or a blowtorch. Apparently heat gun seems to be a little bit more effective for Skylake. The Germans prefer it over a torch any day, but the issue is you can't always bring those stuff, let's say, on, on, on an airplane. So heat gun might be a better thing to do as well. But these guys are local, so blowtorch it is. Indeed, you don't have the same limitation when doing the transports. So we have Mark that tried to um, to run the benchmark, but crashed. And just before, we had the same uh, thing with Rapali that tried to run the benchmark and crashed as well. So they can they can go into the BIOS, they can go into uh, they can use the software that were provided. Uh, they all use the uh, the same uh, the same OS, and they all use the Intel Core i7 6700K Skylake CPU. So the code name is Skylake. This is the fastest uh, Skylake CPU from Intel you can find on the market, and uh, they have been overclocking by default. It's like 4.2 gigahertz, and they are overclocking this one to 5.5 today with the usage of liquid nitrogen nitrogen that is negative 200 degrees this is extremely cold and this is why we use it because it's extremely efficient to remove the heat produced by the cpu yeah and you see uh, these guys are going straight into the bias and changing a lot of values and, and we have to really be aware what what all these values do and, and this is usually the fun when you have like a new platform like skylake has been launched last year as well than full scanning before each cpu generation has a certain demand of other voltages and stuff and those take a long time to figure out luckily for us Asus put up like a very good liquid nitrogen overclocking guide when launching the the, the motherboards the ROG series and everybody already had like a good idea what was going on with these CPUs normally with with, with, with other releases it's just like just find out yourself guys and, and just see what works and what doesn't work and usually uh, let's say after a few months when the platform has been launched people are getting more and more acquainted with, with what you can have to dial in and what you can better leave on auto. We're here using the uh, Asus Maximus 8 Hero and the Asus Maximus 8 Extreme motherboard and they are all being powered by the Seasonic P760 watt power supply. We are here, and this is halfway through this final of the HWBOT World Series North America and we have one of the contestants, Mark0053, that is in the lead against his uh, fellow Canadian friend, Trust Party, that is following closely by just 0.3 points. Indeed, Mark might have the edge that he had already some minor experience on, on, on the Skylake platform, while Trust Party is now not going to call him a noob, but He's really new to, to, to how this, let's say, new platform of Intel reacts was to the cold and stuff like that. Just, it's just not easy to figure we, out. Just yesterday we had a discussion. He actually bought the system just for the competition. That's yeah. pretty much how it works. He, he did buy the system before, but he knew that he wanted to have one for the for the event here. So that's pretty much the reason why. Because he's uh, one of the guys that used to get the uh, like the oldies, like the whole hardware and... Uh, and the, and and the last things. Oh, that's the first time we see it as well for this World Series here. Uh, going into the BIOS change and changing and adjusting the memory settings. This could be a winner or a killer. This is Indeed, but but you can see that Mark zero zero five three prepared well because these are the timings that you need to push to get higher memory frequencies. If you leave these on auto, probably the setup will not boot over three thousand six hundred megahertz. So. You see already that there's like a lot of preparation done at home or he's just acquainted with the setup. That That's the other thing. I don't think Rasparty has all that in the bag at this moment. He's just trying to figure out why doesn't this setup boot? Why doesn't this work? Why doesn't it post? Just quick debugging is needed. But we're already like almost less than 30 minutes to go. Let us know on the live chat who you are rooting for. Are you rooting for Rasparty or are you rooting for Mark? Let us know on the live chat. The two are Canadian and the two are from the Overclock.net community, so that's that's kind of like a like a home run for both of them. Yeah, it's like a local derby, isn't it? Makes it even more interesting, and especially because they're like number one, number two. So Mark 0053 especially wants to maybe remain in the lead and to be number one of Canada, because you guys can win competition points as well, and those competition points can be vital to be, maybe do a, a swap change between spot one or two in the country. So a lot of BIOS tweaking now going on. Less than 30 minutes to go. 
1363 is running so you can see like uh, the the calculation process is actually calculating like a 3d rendering of any uh, of of this image and as i say like each of the square are a rendering thread in the in the computer This is visually interesting because you can see directly what's going on. Let's see the score for it. 13 to 13. This is not improving its previous score, but still is now back in the system because it's been almost nine minutes that both of the overclockers are trying to get into the system and they were into some issue. Of course, they use liquid nitrogen, so the cold is extremely, uh, this is extremely cold and these condensation issues, they need to take care of all the uh, bytes and knobs to make sure that the system is stable at the very edge of stability. Going for a run out at 5,500, it should be closer to 1340 now. Let's see what he can pull off. For a spot, it really needs to get into the action. 13 to 27, slowly improving. Maybe he will be catching up with his own score, 13 to 30, uh, 63. Uh, the rest party just got back to the system, just got back to it. Oh, that was a straight lock. It's, it's crashed straight away. Switch to Raspardi. Really, it's so insane to see these V-cores. Like, they're so high. Indeed, it's just the same behavior as we saw with Dankop. You still remember, Truth, when he was like pushing two volts and even more through the, the, the Skylake CPU? Okay, these guys were like fully full pot, so running at minus 196 degrees centigrade. But indeed, you, you have to push it as hard as possible. This, this is, of course, not your gear. It's sponsored material, so if you want to win, you have to max it out. So I don't know, did he do the real time or did he just locked straight away with Mark 0053? For, for Mark, it just locked straight away. Mark is going back to the system. Raspberry had the same issue, he's trying to run the benchmark, and there's not even the first thread of calculations going, just the, the workload was being prepared for the calculation and just crashed because they are so on the edge of stability. But Mark is already back in the system and there's 10 minutes left in this SWBot World Series North America final. The winner of this match will get a golden ticket to get to the final of the SWBot World Championship in Germany in December. Indeed, and that's already a fun prize. Like I said, it's, it's cool to hang out with these guys. It's not that we talk only about PC hardware, but we're like fully into it, of course. And if you get like a free ticket to go to Berlin and hang out with the guys there for a few days, do overclocking, maybe gain some cash or hardware prizes, it's a win-win situation in my book. So he's at 5.6 gigahertz. He was benching at 5.5 just before, going back to 5.6 now. That was the settings that was not passing earlier today. Mm -hmm. We also changed the, the memory values, and I think he loses a little bit of performance versus the previous rounds. He tried to go with a little bit higher memory speed, but he loosened one of the values a little bit too loose, I think, and he's losing bandwidth there. So it could be that he can't match his, his previous run. Just do the real time trick now, Mark. Oh, he's trying to go to 5.7 gigahertz. Always trying. Raspardi is still struggling in getting his system to boot. 5.7, would it work? Would it crash? Seems to go. Calculation is going on. Seems to go. Give it some little, little bit more cold. Oh, uh, it locked. No, damn it. It'll... The crash is going to too fast, Rufus. You don't see a blue screen anymore. <laughs> yeah, the, it's, it's not close to the edge. It's like far past the edge. <laughs> There's seven minutes left in this competition. This is gonna be super, super tight for the overclockers. Uh, no, they have been pushing the scores so fast in the first eight minutes. The first eight minutes of this game were extremely fast. And in the end, well, that's it. For the past 10 minutes, they have been struggling to get a better score. Eh? So Indeed, these guys, it's, it's like I said, th this is the issue with, with the original thermal paste of Intel and, and even 
Cinebench is pretty rough. For, for example, an XTU, the thing you, that you could see if the pace cracks, it's even if you're like at the pot temperature, so it's a minus 120. And if you would read out it in XTU, it would be like plus 60. So you had like an insane scale, difference in, 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 in temperature, and which is not good, indicating that the thermal pace crack. And maybe that, that's one of the issues that they're running against. So they, they're reaching a certain cold temperature, a certain voltage that they can use, and that's it. The system doesn't want to go any higher. Now you just have to keep it stable, maybe raise the uncore, maybe dial in the memory timings, but there's not that much time left. Only six, less than seven minutes at this moment. Back to Mark. Mark benching. And he's going straight to the. Uh, he's just, he just reduced from 5.7 to 5.6 again, uh, or 5.5 for this time. He, he just wants to know if he maxed out the CPU frequency and now he should be trying to uh, dial in the memory or uh, dial in some of the extra settings around the around the system to improve his score in Cinebench. He's still in the lead for now, but we don't know what could happen in the next six minutes. I have no clue how, how high Rasparty can, can clock his CPU, probably... Ah, Parindo it's close! 61, that's super close from his previous core. Yeah. Yeah, and we're also getting the, the, the feedback of the Noxinite hide the window, indeed. That's something you can do, either go in real time or just move it away. Also, thing that works, if you place the mouse cursor on the top bar of Cinebench, it also doesn't display the rendering of the screen, but your score gets a little boost. And, and these are the little tricks that you need to know if you want to do these competitions. Raspberry so launched the benchmark and crashed after the uh, the first eight thread of the, of the calculation were launched. So let's see if we can improve the score. Ah, oh, it crashed again. Oh, raised at the end. Yeah, this is overclocking extreme at its purest form. It doesn't always go smooth and then can be a lot of uh, hassles. And maybe that's one of the reasons that some overclockers don't like the 30-minute limit because you sometimes you have to really figure out what is going on. Raspardi asking the assistance of a heat gun. Christian Ney's personal hair dryer coming up. They are both restarting the system. That's why you have this view. There is 4 minutes and 45 seconds left. Let's ask Christian what are the temperature they are uh, running at. Christian, we can hear you. Sorry, I didn't I didn't hear the question. Uh, um, what temperature are they running at? Uh, Rasp uh, Tony is at minus 172. So, so it's... Yeah, he's full pot. And uh, Tony uh, and Mark is at minus 110. Thanks. So Tony full pot and Mark minus 110. So negative 110 for uh, for Mark. This is actually uh, 10 degrees more uh, warmer than what he used to have before. Uh, maybe this is uh, one of the issues he had. But this is crazy to have um, Raspardi to go full pot. So what we do, what we mean by full pot is actually filling up the complete uh, CPU, but with uh, all the liquid nitrogen he can to uh, have. Uh, the 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 best cooling efficiency, but maybe he already have the crack. Yeah, that that's the thing that he needs to figure out. Usually, he can run like five gigahertz or something easily, five point two, five point three, and then it stops. While you could do like five point seven before, maybe, and that's something he needs to 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 find out. This is also why we use when during extreme overclocking, we use install like a temperature monitoring tool, like real um, real temp or core temp, and then you can read out during, maybe while you're running, if one of the cores hits positive temperatures, even if you're full pot, it can hit positive temperatures. And then you know it cracked. So you need to heat up, remount, and do it again. So we're gonna have the end of the benchmark on the rest part. This one seems it could be working, could be passing. Let's see the scores. 11.40. That's really Oh, it low. was maybe at stock. Yeah, it was maybe at stock, yeah. Oh, is it 5, 5, 5, 5,000? 5 gig, so. like 98 PCLK by 55. Not touching the CPU ratio. Um, White West Party is trying to figure out the right settings uh, for for this. Mark is in the BIOS and he put 1.8 volt on the CPU core voltage. <laughs> we are getting really? closer to, to what we had in Europe, but these CPU are not deleted. That would be tricky. Yeah, indeed, and, and, and this is like putting a lot of pressure on the thermal pace. Yeah, and on one side it has like minus 120, and on the inside something wants to heat it up like maximum, and it could pop. Indeed, it could crack, and then then it's over. Okay, Mark is in a comfortable lead. Yes, like almost 30 points advantage over Rasparte, 
and like some guys said on the, on the Twitch channel, it's not a good idea to run full pot. But that just, yeah, it's something that, that you're if you're not acquainted with with the setup. I, I had the same issues that this guy is facing right now when I did the review. I just did the article for the for the 6700K and also wanted to include LN2 results. And I was like, why doesn't this scale at a certain moment? It only gets worse. And then a few days later, somebody else had the same issues. And we figured out it was the thermal paste which was cracking here. Yeah. And there's 1 minute and 40 seconds left in this final of the HWBOT World Series 2016 here in North America. The winner of this match, Mark0053 or Resparty, will win a ticket, a golden ticket to go to the HWBOT World Championship to happen in December in Germany. Indeed, and they have great stake in Germany, don't they have to? Indeed they have, and the stakes are high here for the <laughs> winner. Indeed. It's not only the hardware that you can gain, but also get flown in, talk to the guys, have fun, maybe put down some good contacts with vendors, maybe get some sponsored hardware. Anything can happen. We're in the last minute of this HWS North America final, and the last score Ooh, from... Oh, yeah. this is improving his score by a lot, 13.82 points. This is a nice improvement from Rasparde. From Mark, sorry. And indeed, it is close to the best score at the moment that I'm seeing on the bot at these clocks. So 5,700 megahertz, 1391 is the best score from Pulse88, a Swedish guy. So he's close, he's close. He really, if he can run and do it real Crash. time, one if time. He, if he can restart his system in the next mm. 25 seconds, he might have a chance to actually even improve his score. But so far, Rasparthi is uh, maybe waiting to run the benchmark. Is he waiting? Is he waiting for it? There's 10, 9, 8. There's just a few seconds left. The judge, we can hear him. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. He's running, he's running. That's running but really slow. But you, slow you see that one core is already stopped, and so it's not... not uh, <laughs> let it run, not man, let it, it run. <laughs> I wouldn't put any more cold into the pot. No, don't do it. <laughs> Leave it let alone. Let it run. <laughs> Let it, Even Let it run! Let it run! I think this will be an all-time low. I don't know. <laughs> uh, are you trying to reach the lowest score as possible? <laughs> you can do it. Come on. It's it's overclocking, not underclocking. I don't know. Is he in slow mode? <laughs> uh, so Maybe we can do, do a sweepstake. What will the score be, Christian? I'm putting like, <laughs> what, 2.70? Something like that? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I think it, it, it would be below below three for sure. Uh, maybe <laughs> that's really slow. This is the longest last run of the competition. <laughs> it's a, it's entertaining. Yeah, at yeah, least yeah. something happens. <laughs> We're seeing boxes being rendered. And this is the slowest run we ever saw. <laughs> say 1.40. I think 1. It, the amateurs could beat that one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Wait, Wait for, for it. it. Wait for it. Incoming. Yeah. Incoming. Okay. Three lines left. And yeah. then crash. You <laughs> <laughs> no, it will not Please crash. don't make him crash. Cold. Come on. This is the, well, the, the right second to last. The last lane is being rendered. The score, the massive, or not so massive score. Can it finish it? No crash, no crash. And the score, oh, 3.47. Oh, oh, oh. This is an all-time <laughs> low score in the competitions. <laughs> Thank you guys for for the entertainment. Something maybe kicked in like the like like we said, the slow mode. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, the CPU was running at just 800 megahertz. Uh, this was the uh, reason why the uh, the benchmark was not um, running completely. Okay, so so this is I think we have a winner. Indeed. I take your hand. Tony. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so cool final to watch, in fact. 
congratulations to Mark0053 is the winner of this HWBOT World Series here in North America and it will get the golden tickets to go to be flown to Germany at the end of December at the end of the year in December for the HWBOT World Championship. My dearly Goft, how was the competition for you? How was this last last drill? Yeah, it was really fun to watch and indeed like you said very entertaining in the beginning. And this is the fun thing about these 1v1s. Do you still remember, Truth, if, we, if you guys did like MOA and stuff, like in a competition that took like three hours before you saw anything happening, any score being submitted. It took like 30 minutes, 40 minutes before people were just giving away what, what they could do. And now you have to show off. In fact, you have to impress the opponent like, dude, I'm here already. Can you catch me? Try to catch me if you can. And that's really, really fun to watch. They had like a, a nice game going. And then at a certain moment, yeah. Maybe Mark had like the slightly faster CPU or the better settings, the better temp control than than, than Ross Party, and that gave him the win. So congrats to Mark. So we have actually the number one of Canada winning against the number two of Canada for the tickets to the Edge Robot World Championship by the end of the year. These two guys are from the Overclock.net community. A big up to them. And of course, as you can see, this 30 minutes kind of format for the match is extremely intense for the Overclockers. In the first 10 minutes of the game, we had a lot of score being pushed one after the other, like Mark submitting a score, then Raspardi submitting a best score after that and then Mark submitting a bad score even after it. These were going on and on and on like this for like 10 minutes and then for the next uh, for the for the next 10 minutes there was nothing they were all struggling because they hit the limit of what of what they can reach and it was actually interesting to see what kind of uh, you know problem and issue and at the very end Mark managed to put out a 13.82 points in Cinebench or that 11.5 and that makes him you know making sure that he was in the lead and you know just displaying a good uh, a good a good sport Raspardi run the last run and did actually the lowest score ever we saw i don't think this this was on purpose he's actually passing by just in front of me and just smiling and laughing i almost sure it did that on purpose and wait for the last very last seconds to just launch it just to see guys I'm I'm not I'm not I'm accessing the final. I I defend my uh, my title of uh, second best overclicker in Canada. This is it. You have to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, and, and they, they respected the order. So and indeed, Mark is maybe a little bit more in touch with the, the latest technology. And I think Raspardi will be motivated. Indeed, he will he will pick up and and he will just find out how to dial in the the Skylake CPU or the platform and probably put down some good scores as well. So this is the final uh, final ranking here at the HWBOT World Tour 2016. The ranking of the HWBOT World Series for Extreme. We had a, qualif uh, a qualifier. Three of the Extreme Overclockers managed to qualify. We have we had Raspardi, Mr. Breeze, and Mark0053. And what is important is the semi-final was against the second and third of the qualifier to define who will go against Mark0053. That was the best of the qualifiers. The grand final was held for uh, between Raspardi and Mark0053 on Cinebench or 11.5. And as you can see, Mark is the new champion of the HWBOT World Series here in North America. Is getting his golden ticket to go to the HWBOT World Championship at the end of the year. And indeed, he like totally dominated the qualifiers as well, grabbing first spot in, in all the three benchmarks. And indeed, had a, a straight golden ticket, let's say, to go to the final. And yeah, he just assured he could do it. And it will be fun to meet and to hook up with in, in Berlin. Indeed, and we will be uh, taking a short uh, few minutes just for the time to prepare for the award ceremony. And uh, if you have any questions on the live chat, you can always... Uh, Go ask them. We had uh, two of the, uh, the some newcomers asking questions of how they can overclock the CPU. Of course, this is something we will be able to uh, help you out on the live chat. Thank you guys for staying in here for the award ceremony. We have the award ceremony for both the amateur and the extreme all at once. And of course, we can't wait to see Mark going back to uh, going back home with this golden ticket. As you can see, we're uh, packing up everything. We will take a short break and come back for the award ceremony.